In the previous uh, video, we talked about uh, this example, uh, negative 1 divided by 26. We saw that the quotient uh, is negative 1 and the remainder is 25. So I didn't explain actually how uh, you get this number. How do you get the quotient to be negative 1? I will do that in this video. Now, uh, before I actually tell you how to do it, I need to talk about couple of functions that are important in mathematics. So the first one is the sine, the sine function. It's a very easy function, so you don't have to compute many things to actually find the value. So if you have x is a real number, it's a real number. Think about a real number as just any number that is not, of course, a complex number or imaginary number. So for example, x in this case, it could be 1, 2, square root of 2, e, pi, whatever number you want, as long as this is not a complex number. So what is the sign of that number? So let's call that a sign of x. You might actually guess what actually the sign would be. Sign basically is telling me, is that number positive or negative or 0? So what is the sign of x? Now, the sign of x will be 1. The number one, if x happens to be a positive number. The sine of x will be negative one if x happens to be less than zero. And the sine of x will be zero only if the value of x is exactly is zero. So let me give you a couple of examples here to see how this uh, works. Uh, so example. So one. So what is the sign, let's say for example, of minus 1.4? So the only thing I have to do is I have to look at the number and determine whether that number is positive or negative. And well, of course, negative 1.4 is a negative number, so the sign of that is negative 1, according to this part right here, this one, the one I'm marking down there with the arrow, this part. So if x, sorry, this one right here. So if x is negative, then the value is negative 1. Now, what is the sign? Let's say, for example, the sign. Oops, I forgot an end there. So, sign. The sign. Sign of. Let's say, for example, 5.2. Well, 5.2 is positive, so the sign would be 1. And there is only one number who has sign of 0, and that's 0, so sign of 0 would be 0. So, basically, the function sign is only telling me whether a number is positive, negative, or zero. Zero is neither positive or negative. I know in some programming languages zero is considered positive. Uh, that's not correct in a mathematical sense. Uh, for, in mathematics zero is neither positive nor negative. So that's the sine function. The other function I want to talk about is uh, the floor function. This might be new for some of you. Uh, is not actually difficult either. It's a little bit more complicated than the function sign. So we're going to start again with x, x a real number. Again, real number is just I know, whatever number, any number that is not a complex number, like 1 over the square root of 2, square root of 3, e pi, pi squared, as long as it's not a complex number. Okay, so x is a real number, so what is the floor function? Now, the floor function is denoted by this. Is the symbol, the floor function, or the floor value of x. What is this equal to? I'm going to write that this in English. So this is the largest integer that is less than or equal To x. Well, it seems like a long thing to define. So, what do I mean by that largest integer that is less than or equal to the value of x? So, it's better to explain this concept with examples. So, let's go to the next page. So, I'm going to go to the top of the page. So, that, that's what, that was my previous page there. So, what do I mean by that? So, let's see some examples here. So, let's say I want to compute, uh, let's look example number one the floor function of 
3. So what is that equal to? Okay, the best thing to compute the floor function is actually to draw the real line. So I'm going to draw the real line so that I have the 0, 1, 2, 3. So what I have to do here to compute the floor function is I'm going to locate this number, which in this case is 2.3, on the real line. So 2.3 is located between 2 and 3, so somewhere around here. You don't have to be exact, actually. 2.3. There. Now, what is the floor function of that number? So what you're going to do is the following thing. You look at the number and look at all the integers that are less than that number. So what are integers here? So 2, 1, 0. You, of course, have here the negative 1, the negative 2. And, of course, you have an infinite number of integers all the way to minus infinity. So you have here the number and you have all the collection of the integers that are below this one. So from the integers that are below this number, you're going to choose the one that is closer to this. Or well, basically what it is, is the largest number of all the ones that are less than that number. That's the definition. I'll just think about it this way. So take the number, place it on the real line, look at your left, the one, the integer that is closer to that number, that's the floor function, the floor of that number. So in this case, the floor of 2.3 is 2. Okay, some of you might think, oh, well, that's very easy. I don't have to do that. The floor function of this number is just the, the integer part of that. That's not true, actually. Let me give you another example to show you that that's not the case. Uh, example number two. So let's compute the floor function of, let's say, for example, minus 4.5. Okay. Now, the answer is not going to be negative 4. So let's do it the way we were doing the example number one. So I'm going to place here my real line, 0. I have to place also the number negative, point four, negative, point, negative 4.5 on the real line. So somewhere like this. So I'm going to draw here my negative numbers, the integers, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and negative 5. Now the number negative 4.5 is located here in this interval. It's in between negative 5 and negative 4. So I'm going to locate that number, then I'm going to use another color this time. Let's say purple. So it's right here in the middle. So this is 4.5. Now to compute the floor of negative 4.5, what you're going to do is look at the number and all the numbers that are all the integers that are below this number. So I'm going to start with negative 5, and then the next one will be negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, and so on and so forth. So what's the closer, the closest integer on the left to negative 4.5? I forgot the negative, therefore the number numbers is negative. What is the closest? Well, the closest here, of course, is this integer, negative 5. So the floor function of that number... So the floor of negative 4.5 is negative 5. So it's not always the whole part of the integer part of the number. The floor function is always equal to the largest integer that is less than this number, which is actually what we did here is the largest integer, the closest, so the one that is uh, closer to this number on the left. So the answer here is negative 5. Now, so we had two functions here, sine of, of a real number, which is just basically telling me, uh, right here, the sine of the number, which is basically telling me uh, if a number is positive or is a negative or it's just 0, and the floor function. Now, those two functions, the reason I want to talk about them is because um, those two functions will allow me to find the quotient of any two um, integers. So if I have a divided by b, there is a very straightforward way to compute the quotient. And this is the, the way. The quotient is always equal to the sine of the divisor, which is this case is b, times the floor of the following number. It's going to be the number a, or the dividend, 
divided by the absolute value of the number b. And remember, the absolute value of b is the positive part of the number. So, so if b is positive, it's b. And if b is negative, it's minus b. All right, so this way, you can compute the quotient. Now, where is this formula coming from? This is a reason for that, that it has to be like that. It has to be the sine of b uh, times the floor of a divided by the absolute value of b. Now, I'm not going to go over the details of why it has to be like that. So, to tell you exactly why it has to be like this, I actually have to do a proof on this, uh, which I'm not going to do. But let's just use it. So, let's come back to the example that we had at the beginning. So, the example was negative uh, 1 divided by 26. So how do I compute the quotient? So what I need to do is basically just look at this formula here and just replace the values that I have here A and B for what it is. So what's going to be the quotient here? So let's call the quotient Q. In this case A which is the dividend is negative 1 and B is 26. So let's see what we have here. So what is Q here? So I'm going to apply the formula, the formula that you see right here, this formula. Let's apply it. So it's going to be the sine of B, and B in this case is 26, so it's going to be sine of 26, times the floor of A, A is negative 1, divided by the absolute value of 26. So, okay, so how do we do this computation? So we have to do all this. We have to compute what is the sine of 26, the floor of that. So let's do it. So let me go to the next page, and let's, let me go up all the way to the uh, beginning of the uh, page here. So what is the sine of 26? That is easy to compute. 26 is a positive number, so that gives me 1. I also have to compute the floor of Remember here, so we're doing my negative 1 divided by the absolute value of 26, but the absolute value of 26 is 26, so I have the floor of that number. Now, for this, you will need a calculator. So let's say negative 1 divided by 26. If I use my calculator, this is going to give you more or less, and you can check that, is minus 0 0.038. Now, remember the best, the best way to calculate the floor function is to go ahead and draw this on the real line. So this is 0, negative 1, negative 2. Uh, this number that you see here, negative 1 over 26, is this decimal. So it's better to get the decimal so I have, I have I can place that number exactly what it is. So what is that number? Let me use another color. Uh, that number will be somewhere around here. So let's see that. Uh, somewhere around there. Okay, let's see that somewhere around here. That's going to be minus 1 over 26. Now, from there, you can actually see what the floor function of negative 1 over 26 is. That's going to be negative 1. So, if I change again back to the white color, then this floor function will give me negative 1. So, what is the quotient? According to what we saw earlier, the quotient is uh, the sine of 26 times the floor of that number. So it's basically 1 times negative 1. So Q will be equal, or the quotient could be, in this case, is negative 1. So that's how I get the number. Now I'm going to give you uh, one more example where I'm going to compute Q uh, using the formula that we just saw now.